Hello and welcome to Latitude Photography Podcast Live Edition. And we're going to be talking about some listener submitted images. So thank you for being here. I've I see a few people are already in and um, and have been waiting for a little bit for this to start. And I really appreciate that. And we're going to be starting here very, very soon with these listener submitted images. If you care to chime in and just say hi in the chat and let me know where you're from, uh, that'd be fantastic. I'd love to give a little shout out to you. But otherwise, uh, let's just get started here shortly with these images and uh, what we're going to be looking at here. I am using a new service for this. I'm using Zoom. You can see that little thing. I was hoping I could get there get their little logo, I guess it's on this side, get their little logo off there, but whatever, I'm using Zoom. Uh, now, this is gonna be an interesting uh, item because I can actually annotate on screen, which I'm really looking forward to. The last couple of days, I've been out backpacking and hiking and whatnot in the Strawberry Mountain Wilderness here in Eastern Oregon, actually about south of here, about four hours, and just got back this afternoon. I've been working on this, getting this prepared. So thank you all for showing up and being here. And let us get started right away now with these images. I'm going to share my screen and we will see the first image up here by Bree Stockwell. She did several images, did several, she submitted, I think, three images of uh, White Sands National Park. And our, our topic, of course, is public lands. So I wanted to um, make sure that we certainly know where we're from and all that good stuff, what we're doing. Hey, Jerry, I see you from Texas. Awesome. And Gary uh, from California. Great to have you here. Thank you so much. It's great to see uh, some familiar faces here. Uh, familiar in that I know we've got some pictures of yours coming up uh, for the two of you. That's awesome. So with Bree's images here, uh, and, and we're, we were also looking for, we were going to try and see what we can do to get it, get across the idea of the design principle of contrast. And so uh, if that were possible, that was just kind of a side note. But with the idea of public lands, uh, here we go with, um, with uh, White Sands National Park. The reason I chose this one was because it was a very uh, out of her three that she that she submitted it, it, highly abstracted image. And so we just have these layering effect going on and certainly have the contrast of the different ideas of the, the tonalities that really bright item. I'm going to try and do um, my annotation uh, item. I'm going to switch that. To, let's see. I'll, I'll do red. And then right here, you know, these very strong lines, and I can't draw very well with my mouse, forgive me. So, so those lines, just really strong, we have a really nice, excellent point where that brings that point to uh, your eye just has to look there. It can't help but, you know, look there. But then we have a, a similar item down here along this edge of the screen uh, of the image. And those two items are kind of playing off each other because they are very similar in tonality, but they're far apart and we have all this other stuff going on in the middle. So I like the lines, I like the layering, and then also it's fairly monochromatic. There's some good, I think, um, things happening there in that it's so simplified. We don't see the sky, we don't see the foreground. It's just really flattened out. And I think there's some good things happening because of that. And Darren, you've joined us uh, from California's Central Coast. That's fantastic. Um, good to see you here. All right, uh, Jarek, Jero, Jarecki, this image, probably too late for review. Not too late. Here it is. A uh, random snap of people walking in, the, in Snowden, Snowdonia National Park. And I had to look up where that is. And it's apparently in Wales. And once I realized that, I was like, this is really cool. I like that idea. Wales, to me, it's it, it's one of those smaller areas. You know, it's, it's within the, the, the island of Great Britain. And then you just have this smaller area. And there's a lot there. I've seen other television shows, documentaries, whatever, that showcase whales. And there's just a lot of good things there, especially for the nature photographer. This, you know, with that idea of contrast, this one's really coming in good. We have these three figures with the motion. It's a slow shutter speed, the motion. We have the virtual whiteout of whatever's in the background. If that's, you know, I assume it's a foggy day. It looks like it's a very even light. And then we have that really wonderful crusty 
texture in the bottom, but it's smoothed out a little bit. We have this action happening with these people. And there's just something there that makes that interesting to look at because of the the difference in those swoosh that the motion swoosh that's happening with those people and then of course the nice static presence of the rocks and what's also fun is when you have people walking like this you know especially look at this fellow here uh and, and i whoops i need to make sure it's okay let's do that I'm, I'm utilizing, remembering how to utilize my, my new tool here. That boot right there is nice and static as well, but then we have this transition to the motion. I think that's pretty fun too. All right, Mike, you made it. Great to see you here. Ron, also from Central California Coast. Excellent and great to see you guys here. Thank you so much. And so with that transition, there's just something there that creates even more interest, I think, for the eye. And that's just fun to look at, isn't it? But then there's also lots of great areas up above where there's just zero detail. So there's this, this negative space that's just, it, it's well composed. You know, we're, we're using our rule of thirds here on the, on the composition, the basic composition, but really it's where that action's happening. That's what makes this image more interesting, I think. All right, Mike Regis, um, Blackwater Falls Park in West Virginia, the waterfall is the park um, that it's named after. And Certainly, I'm a I'm a huge fan of waterfalls, and this one, you know, we're far away. Uh, we're we're zooming in a little bit. We've got the uh, slow shutter speed, so we can slow down that water. Everything is you know fairly centrally framed. We've got the wonderful framing elements of all the trees. What I'm curious about though is, and this is certainly is part of the benefit that you have when you're out there shooting. I don't know what these things are like, what the, what the area is like in this particular location, but it does feel like we could use, I think we could benefit from a little more space over here on the left-hand side. It feels like the overall falls needs to go this way just a little bit. And that would take care of some of this space down in here. It feels like there's just a little extra item, little extra foliage that it's a good supporting element, but I'm just wondering what would happen if we had more over here. Now, maybe there's something there that we just can't fathom to, to include in the frame. And so maybe this is the best idea. But it, the, the thing, the reason I'm saying this is, I'm gonna clear this once again, is because all the energy is flowing down this way and then it virtually has nowhere to go. We have these rocks, we have the trees, it virtually has nowhere to go. And I'm just wondering, is there any chance that we can free up that, that motion pattern of where all that energy is going. And that might be something that helps us out a little bit as the viewer. The overall idea of the, the, of the exposure and things like that, I think are coming in just fine. Uh, you know, my, on my screen, the greens, I think are just slightly rich for what I would go for, but that could just be a difference in screens and such like that. It's difficult when we don't have a completely, uh, calibrated process, calibrated system um, amongst all users kind of a thing. So that's hard to, to truly comment on when it's such a small issue like it is here. But yeah, the, the shutter speed looks, looks really good. And the overall composition, I think, feels really, uh, really strong. I th I'm just wondering, could it be stronger by throwing that, by positioning that slightly more to the right in the frame rather than where it's at exactly? All right, this image, David Patton finally managed to get out for a hike. Yay, that's awesome. It's been a pain trying to do much travel recently, but the views are worth it. Unfortunately, I picked the wrong trail for good photo opportunities, and this was the only shot I came away with that I liked. It was a bit of a plain sky, and trying to find composition that wasn't blocked by trees took a while, but I really liked how the rocks stood out so well from the forest. Yes, I think that is the thing about this image. The rocks and how they are standing out from the forest where you just have all these things here. These are very strong, lots of detail all throughout here. And then when you come in with all these other items out here in the, in the, in the trees, these items, they just don't have as much detail and that's completely fine. There's nothing wrong with that. I do agree with what he's saying here about the very plain sky. What I would encourage 
what I would encourage to have happened here is finding a way to even minimize the sky even more. I'm not sure exactly how we would do that and still, let's say, include some of the sky. I'm going to clear out these drawings here. But maybe there's a way to you know, frame in, let's, let's see, I'm still on the green. Maybe there's a way to zoom in and frame in, you know, some of these other elements. So maybe uh, something in this nature here where we might go something along like this. You know, if we were to crop something like that, and I'm talking about zooming in, I wouldn't want to do this much of a crop in post-production, but what that's going to do, that's going to elevate this tree right here in importance and you're going to start to look at that and that's going to be an important element and i'm not getting a perfect framing with that green drawing but i think you get the idea where if we were to isolate something a little more maybe we're going to enhance some of those items and we're going to then enhance the relationship between those items where right now that sky yes it is definitely a little bit on the it's not really doing anything for us and so um, it those it does become a challenge to do that. And there's probably multiple framings that we could think of too. You know, why not consider putting that tree in the lower right-hand corner? If I can draw a straight line, that would be helpful. Um, I would not want to do this actually, because that's leaving that little bit there would just create a distraction. But anyway, you get the idea. This is a general framing. And so when you when you crop out those types of items and focus in on those details, we're just changing the whole nature of the image. And that's just something to think about to um, when you're when you're out there framing up an image like this. Now, certainly you may not have your zoom lens with you because when you're on a hike, like I said, I just got back from, let's see, it was three nights of backpacking and hiking at least, I would say, five miles a day. And uh, that's a lot of uphill hiking too, not just some level hiking. And all that camera gear can get very heavy. <laughs> and... I can understand not wanting to take the zoom lens when you're doing um, any type of hike. I can understand where you might want to leave it, leave it behind. But if you have that opportunity to zoom in, that's where I'm thinking on a sky on a day like this with a sky like that, it's probably your best friend. All right. This image from Gary Brooks, uh, Gary, you're here. So, you know, um, if you have any information, otherwise uh, feel free to type it in as, as I'm commenting here. Never thought much about shooting contrasts until now. All right, I'm glad I was able to uh, nudge you in that direction. So the topic was a challenge. Excellent. I love to hear that. Love to see that. My mind went straight to photographing the dunes at Death Valley at sunrise. It's a place where you can find many types of contrasts all in one frame, light and shadow, contrast in the textures of the sand, and the contrast of the soft sand against the background of the jagged hills. Absolutely, absolutely. That is what really makes it, I think, in this image are the, the relationships that are made between these forms. So we have, as he says, the jagged hills in the background, and then we have these much softer elements here in the foreground. So I am noticing, let's get back on this draw function again. I am noticing there's a tiny little bit of a sky right there. So I would zoom in or crop just a little bit to get rid of that sky. And then what I'm also curious to think about is, is there an enhancement that we can do of any of these shapes? So, and what I mean by that is I'm looking at the image, I'm trying to think about different cropping or different ways to elevate the importance of the shapes that we see, because there's, oh, all these, these beautiful lines, these lines are so strong and they're creating such, and look how they layer right on top of each other. And, and, and then we have this, this pinnacle here type of thing. All those layering elements can work really well together, but I'm also a little concerned that the, the eye might be getting a little overwhelmed when we have so many, because we also have, let's get back on that thing. We also have, um, these lines that the shadows create. And so there's just a lot going on there. And I'm, and I'm just wondering, is, is there any chance that we can simplify this just a little bit? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to clear this out again, and I'm going to be thinking about, does this work here where we might, again, this is rough, please, you know, where we might do that, does that work at all? And, and I'm not, I'm really not liking that because that places this even more kind of in the center. And I don't know that I want that in the center. So I'm thinking out loud here as, as I'm talking through it, but the main goal, maybe it's more about 
something like that, you know, where we crop this out over here and, you know, we might crop a little bit like so here. And then that's just going to, I think, make your composition a little bit stronger. And then adding the emphasis of the very, the difference between this elements and these elements here. Uh, let's see. He's saying Ron is, is chiming in here. Love the mesquite dunes. Have you been out to the Palmont? Panamint dunes, easy to get to, no people. Yeah, I uh, personally, I, anyway, I've not been there. And you're, I, I presume, Ron, that you're asking Gary about that. But yeah, it's definitely one of the places that has notched up on my list as I am looking this September. You, you, you longtime listeners or even recent listeners to the podcast will uh, remember I've, I've been talking about a, a big experience I'm going to be doing this September into October, where I'm going to um, going to at least four national parks. And certainly um, this one, Death Valley, has been on my list um, of interesting places to go. Uh, I have yet to determine my fourth national park. So yeah, we'll see how that all turns out. All right. So Getting back to the idea of contrast, again, the, the, that notion of contrast or the smooth sand with the rugged, that's beautiful. I just had another thought. I'm wondering what would happen if this were converted. It probably wouldn't work if it were converted to black and white. I think we need the color, um, whereas the other image worked beautifully in black and white. But no, I think we, I, I actually think we need the colors. It's, it's pretty good that way. All right, here, this one, uh, Patrick Lance. Uh, let's see here. After hearing that there was a massive snowfall the previous day, I rushed out to Olympic National Park. Hey, that's in my neck of the woods, kind of, sort of. Uh, intent on doing some photography in snowy forests, but when I arrived there, it was a bright sunny day with mostly blue skies, making the forest scenes too harsh. Ah, yeah, that can definitely be not a good thing. But I became enamored with the contrast with the warmth of the sunshine with the frigid snow and eventually made my way to Crescent Lake where I saw this serene scene and felt captured by the opposition with the snowy dock. Yes. The thing too, also, I think that makes this image is that mist. So we have the snowy dock, we have the mist, and then we have the clearing day. And I think also what might might be interested uh, I just saw you joining, uh, Damien. Thank you. Central Coast also. A lot of people from Central Coast, California. Uh, it's good. Uh, what I think might make this um, a little more, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, kind of honed in, kind of kind of um, more realistic about that idea of the snow, because the snow gives you that chill effect. But when you see the sky like that and you see the background as well lit as that is, there's just that contrast. And I guess that's one of the points that we're trying to get at is the contrast. But since this dock isn't really leading to anything, what I'm looking for is a way to make this dock more of the thing, more of the subject of interest. And so that could either mean walking out a little bit further, maybe. And um, where's my draw thing? Here we go. I'm going to do a rectangle this time. And I'm not cropping. I'm just saying, say, emphasize these elements. If, there, if there's a way to find a, you know, find a way to emphasize these elements, it might mean zooming in. It might mean walking out there. But these items, to me, tend to be a little more of that interesting element about the dock. And I'm just wondering if that could be elevated because then all of a sudden the eye is kept into this notion of the snow, the dock, the water, the fog, and then that also becomes a destination. Right now, these elements out here are not these, these things, these little things. These elements are not really a visual destination per se. Um, they're just part of, the, part of the overall thing. So again, if anyone who's uh, here uh, live with us is, um, if you have any comments, I, I welcome your comments, whether it's about the photo here, you like what I said, you, you disagree with what I said, anything along those lines, I welcome your comments. It's great to have a conversation. All right. Overall on the composition, you know, it's centrally composed with the exception, you know, we do have, let me get back on my line here. We do have this space here where this is, you know, right in the corner. So that's where another thing I'm curious about should we have an angle to the dock? Should we have gone with complete 
uh, balance, complete mirroring the dock. I kind of think we might have, might should have, because, you know, the center of the dock is coming right here. That's not quite the center of the image, but it's so close. It's one of those things where, because it's so close, I say, you might as well go ahead and do it. You might as well, um, you might as well just make that happen and, and go for pure symmetry there. Uh, trail XP alternative. He's uh, we're chiming in here. Alternative would be to widen the frame even further and make the mountains the subject. Sure. Yeah. If we have, I think that's what we're looking at here is to say, I think we have a good start of what the subject is. And we have three options. In my opinion, we have three options. We have the dock, we have the fog and we have the mountains and let's make one of those things more prominently the subject. That's that's kind of what I'm going for. Bruce is saying, uh, for me, context is important to tell a story. That may mean not zooming as much. Yeah, you're right. And so in that sense, uh, Bruce, this could very well be elevated in importance. The, the overall idea of the image, the overall purpose of the image could be elevated when you're going uh, in, a, in a series of images. You know, think about putting this in a series of three images, and then all of a sudden it just becomes super strong in supporting that notion of the context of what you're looking for there. And, I, and there's certainly some, some wisdom to be said with that as well. Uh, Darren Whiteley, agree on the mirroring of the doc. You either need it, uh, make it obvious and not meant to be uh, symmetric or make it symmetric. Yeah, we're close enough to it's just like, uh, we probably should have just gone ahead and done that for sure. Uh, Jerry Sargent asking if a polarizer was used. To me, the texture under the water of the lower right is distracting. Yeah, good point. I'm glad you brought that up, Jerry. Um, I would think that possibly, boy, yeah, that's a good one. Um, it seems I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and say probably not because the sky feels extremely even it's, this seems like a slightly wider angle and the sky feels very even. I also don't know exactly where this, I'm trying to determine where the, exactly where the sun is coming from. Um, because that would affect whether or not the polarizer is having a strong effect or not. But yeah, if we were to just, th just think about, I will go back on my um, rectangle here if we were to use this as our crop, maybe even eliminate the sky completely, then what we're doing is we're just making this dock the entire structure. We're making it the entire well, structure. That's the word. That's the wrong word to say. We're making the dock the entire interest of the picture um, rather than just the overall overall scene. All right, let us move on to the next image. All right, Steve Connery, a scene from Bryce National Park, illustrating contrast to the design element. Perfect, yes. So these, these forms, these natural hoodoo forms at Bryce National Park, the thing I really like about this, not just, and it, certainly this is what he's getting at, this is what Steve is getting at, the contrast here, the bright and the dark contrasting. He converted to black and white, so we have, uh, you know, color is not part of the scene. Color is not part of the issue. The texture is actually very similar between these two uh, forms, uh, between these two colored ideas, but we have the bright and the dark and, and the dark in the background. And I think that is really what makes this image all about the contrast, all about the interest point of what that element is. Uh, Darren Whiteley, you're saying, I like that the top of the dock doesn't break the horizon of the water. Um, yeah, that was back in our previous image. Uh, if I were to go back, can I go back? There we go. Uh, yeah, basically the top of the dock. Yeah, I, I can see how that, um, if that were to break that, that would definitely, that, that, that would cause a visual oopsie that the eye could probably just not get away from. All right, back on this image. One thing I'm curious about on this image, if, if it seems like some depth of field is happening here because all of these elements, oh, there I went and did my thing again like that. Come on. There it is. And let me get to drawing. There we go. And these elements in the background, you know, whether it's this one or this one, any of these that I look at, it looks like they're just slightly out of focus. And this is where I'm going to say I would like them to either be fully in focus so they have the exact same texture and the feel of that perfect texture, that rough texture that is happening there, or make them a little more out of focus so there is more contrast between uh, the textures of those elements. Because if these were more out of focus, then we're going to really 
focus our attention on this thing. But if, if these items are really extra sharp, because your depth of field is, is a lot longer and we get these things to be really extra sharp, then that's just going to enhance the, the importance of the value, the, the total value between these elements. So right now they're really close and I'm suggesting I'd like to see it a little more one way or the other. And Darren is saying, wonder if you could have burned some of the darker areas even more to make this, the central brighter pillar stand out, particularly the immediate left and right. Yes. So what I would have, yeah, I, I was, I was, um, that, that's a good, uh, a good segue here because it looks like we've done that a little bit in the upper left corner and the upper right corner and probably bringing that down a little bit this way as well would probably help bring that in a little bit. And so really what it looks like, it looks like a standard vignette was applied. And this is where I'm going to say, let's put a custom vignette so you can emphasize some more of that darkness and I'm kind of using my mouse and not drawing in this area here. And then it feels like it was already down here as well, where I'm drawing in this lower right-hand corner. That feels like is it was subject to some, you know, the vignette tool in Lightroom because it's a little bit darker than say right here, but it's under the same lighting. So I would assume that these were actually, you know, the same tonal value, uh, but we have some vignetting going on in Lightroom, it seems, or natural lens vignetting could, be, could happen as well. So yeah, I would definitely agree with a little little more of that custom vignetting on this image too, in order to help really emphasize that central figure. Let's talk about composition really quick. Overall, actually, I like the square composition. I'm really a fan of that uh, for this particular image. The only thing I think I might have suggested happen, I'm going to get back to my rectangle here, and that is this, this area down here is a little bit it's just a little bit um, odd to me. And so let's see, clear that again. And so what I probably would have done is pretty much crop it about like that and maybe add a little more. If we had a little more in the image, add a little more on the right-hand side to make sure we keep it square. Um, but keeping, but drawing this and maybe even just going, you know, all the way in like that so that it just leads off the edge like that and doesn't give you that little cliff uh, to to jump off of on the on the bottom there, but otherwise the central the central positioning I, I find that nice and strong, especially with let me get back to a line here, especially with how this organic form overall this shape here uh, it works really well. And then of course you have this thing coming up. So if this were all symmetrical and things like that, I might have a different opinion. But it's not symmetrical, and so I find that it works. All right, let us move on to Randy Gamer's image from a recent trip to escape the heat dome that sat over the Pacific Northwest. I did a little hiking, a uh, night hiking uh, in MRNP. Um, would that be Rocky Mountain National Park? I think it's actually Rocky Mountain is what he's intended to say here. Uh, no, Mount Rainier. Oops. That's that. I look. I then looked at the the mountain itself. I was like, um, no, that's that's Rainier. <laughs> so anyway, um, really enjoyed. Let's see, Pelican has natural AC, even though it was set to eighty five this day. Much appreciation to friends that dragged me out in the middle of the night to enjoy this scene and renewed. Yes, the, whenever you get out there. Uh, especially at nighttime, things like this, that, that can just be really awesome. That's, that's just good. All right. So with this image, the colors I find are great. The reflection is certainly working well. And then these trees, I mean, they're just virtually perfectly positioned. Um, if I were to really get super picky here, uh, it's almost like a, forgive me, Randy, uh, we do have a few pixels of right here on the left-hand side of some trees that might need to be cropped out, but otherwise uh, it's coming in really strongly. The only thing that I'm curious about are these, at the time, I, I, as I think through the image, I might get more curious, are these elements, these, these elements in the water. And I'm just wondering if they could be darkened a little bit because they feel lighter than the reflections of the trees. And so maybe they could be darkened. Maybe that doesn't make any sense. Um, but yeah, those are just the only things. They do provide a level of interest. I'm gl I think I'm glad they're there. I'm just wondering if there's anything differently that could be done to them so that they, they feel more part of the neighborhood, so to speak. Um, otherwise, your overall cropping, I think, is really decent. Let me clear this out so I can 
uh, see it again without all that orange stuff on there. You know, the, the, the way the snow comes in from each side and, and, you know, we have a little bit of layering overall, somewhat layering, um, you know, this, this is kind of a, a certain layer here. We then have this element that's creating a layer. And then of course the mountain is creating another layer. So these aren't as obvious as those sand dunes, but you know, that gives us this depth that gives us this sense of, of dimensionality that is nice to be able to have. It's a subtle dimensionality. It's not like super duper. It's subtle, but it still works and it's, it's coming along pretty good. All right. The next image, let's see where we're at here. Uh, Steve Blakely taken in 2016 at Badlands. Awesome. I am planning to go to Badlands myself. This, um, let's see, probably going to be the first week of October that I'll actually get there. And um, let's see, it was Canon 70D with 18 to 135 kit lens. All right, on this image, certainly I'm, I'm loving the fact that we have some wildlife here. And these, I, I really do find though, here's, here's the thing um, on this image. I find all these areas up here, whatever this is, I, I don't even know I, that I can say what, that, what all that is. I am curious why this suddenly gets darker up here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna draw in a different color. I'm gonna draw in this cyan type color. For some reason, at the top of the frame, it just gets really dark, and I'm not sure if that's just a cloud over overlaying or, or or just what. But to me, I find all that background element; those are the interesting parts. And let me switch colors again. I'm gonna go with uh, red. And these parts here, I'm less interested in. The, the eye just doesn't. My eye, anyway, just doesn't really. I don't find anything interesting down there. And so these, these goats, whatever these animals are, let me clear this out. They certainly didn't, it doesn't seem to me anyway, they didn't walk up here and they're not going to walk down there. They're going to be interacting back here or they're going to go on up the, the ridge or they'll go up the ridge this way. So because of that, because I don't think, to me anyway, it does not seem like the goats would be going down here. I don't know what purpose this provides except for to say they're on a high ridge, but we already don't know how high the ridge is. So if we were to, let me clear that out again, if we were to just chop all that stuff off and emphasize these elements back here as part of the environment, the atmosphere, the area that these, these animals are in, I think we have... Uh, I think we have a better chance of communicating the environment in which the animals live. Um, certainly these items down here are important to understand, but you still get that with these elements here. So it's all about cropping and I almost have drawn some kind of a weird face. Here's some hair up top and some eyes. And so it's all about a cropping to, for me in this image and, and then understanding, you know, the relationship of uh, emphasizing, I should say, the relationship of our subject to the background or the subject to its environment is probably a better way to put it. So we can be thinking about what is it that's important in this image for these, for these animals. All right, um, let's go on to the next image. All right, a very kind of moody image. Mike, uh, you chimed in earlier. So here we go with your image. Uh, North Algodonas Dunes Wilderness encompasses more than 26,000 acres. The wilderness's solitude contrasts Glamis Dunes OHV to the south, just across Highway 78. I'm drawn to the extremes of light versus dark, smooth versus rippled, and the energy of the inverse complementary colors. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you've got it pretty much all nailed right here. The satur I do think the saturation of the blues for myself are just a little bit on the rich side. Um, things that are really strong on this image. Let's, let's start out with that first. Certainly this line right here where this comes in and then it kind of diminishes as it comes into the ripples right down in this fashion here. And of course, all the ripples coming up as it is. Um, we have a few little animal footprints over in this area. That's kind of fun. Breaks it up a little bit in the corner. 
but that first item, this, this is just super strong, beautiful kind of a um, S curve. And then it kind of comes up and over for me, but really your eye could go almost either way. Um, great S curve kind of thing coming down here. I'm just trying to think your idea of the color contrast and the complementary colors, the blue versus the, the, the warm hues here. Absolutely. Um, I'm just trying to, and, and all of your lines from these, from these uh, ripples are all pointing where they need to point to. It's not like you're, you angled the camera a different way and they're just taking the eye somewhere where it shouldn't be going. No, those are taking the eye where it needs to be going. So I think we have a lot of success here. There's a lot of things going on that are successful. The thing that I'm just a little bit, I'm not sure how I would do it. And this is where I think desaturating those blues, I think might help you just a little bit, but this area over here where the clouds are, and then that transition of where the sun was setting uh, where we have some of this orange here in the sun, that's where it's throwing me off a little bit because it seems really bright over here, but then it seems like the light is coming from this direction here, not from this direction here, if, if that makes sense. And this warm light is what's causing me, I think, this warm light up here, contrasting so much with this blue, this deep, deep, deep blue here. That's where it's just, if we tone down that blue just a hair, I think it'll feel a little more natural and it'll feel a little more present, a little more... Um, a, a, a little more like it belongs kind of an idea, but compositionally, I, I find it. And I, I, I want to, you know, Darren and Jerry and Bruce uh, and Ron, I'd love for you to, to chime in. What do you think about the composition? Uh, Mike, a little too much saturation uh, agreeing. Yep. Um, uh, Cause I actually think compositionally, I think it's all right. Now there might be a chance to just crop a little bit off the edge here, but you know, this, by, by keeping it, we're really understanding what the environment is like. We're understanding what the landscape is like. And that is important. I think that is important. If you were to say, let's just make this an abstraction, kind of like that first image where we started out with Brie, where we just had an abstraction of the, let's get back to the rectangle of the dune itself. You know, that's where you might, you know, take a crop like that and do something like that or, you know, even something along those lines. And I'm thinking in rough terms here. I'm not drawing this exactly. But yeah, as it is, it gives us an idea of the environment. It gives us the idea of the landscape. And that's important to have. So that's, that's all good. Uh, Pre-sunrise, you're clarifying. Perfect. Thank you, Mike a little underexposed in this presentation. I initially thought that myself, um, but I'm not, I, I think what we're doing here with that, with that darkened uh, air, especially down in here, down in this area, if it just, it does feel a little dark, but given that it's pre sunrise, we're so early in the day. Um, I decided I wasn't going to concern myself with that because we have a little bit of a brightness here and we have, we definitely have some good presence in this area here on the overall tonality. Now that might be another thing um, that Trail XP is chiming in with to say uh, the exposure. What would happen, Mike, if this up here, this area up here were a bit darker, um, then it might, it, it might, you know, balance just a little bit. It, that That's a good, uh, a good a good way to think about it too possibly uh bruce saying love the composition but oversaturated maybe black and white would be interesting yeah black and white it could be very interesting if we were to have more exposure i would agree with uh both um what trail xp was saying and what bruce said um to convert to black and white but for me i would want it to be a little bit brighter than if it were converted to black and white because I, to me i like to have those contrasts and tones and we just don't have a rich contrast in tones down here in these ripples those would start to kind of uh melt away and so i would want to enhance those just a little bit so i could keep the feeling of them right now we we have the feeling of those ripples because of the color that's involved but if we were to get rid of color that's where, oh, I wish I remembered my keyboard shortcut to get rid of color. Um, I don't want to risk it and crash anything, so I'm not going to do that. Um, 
Darren Whiteley love the leading lines. Yes, those those ripples, you know, like I had mentioned, they're pointing where they need to point. If if Mike had moved his camera one way or the other, and then they would be running crossways, it just wouldn't feel natural, wouldn't feel right. All right, next image, uh, Jeremy Schwartz, the High Point Monument centerpiece of High Point State Park in New Jersey. Uh, boy, um, I've been to New Jersey. Uh, my folks used to live there a long time ago <laughs> when I was in college. Um, let's see, as the name suggests, this is the highest point in New Jersey at 1,803 feet tall. And then they put a 220 foot obelisk on top of it. As a side note, this is one of the six state high points of the Appalachian Trail runs over or gets within a half mile of this. Cool. So with this image, um, it is a good record of this item. It is a good, it's very central. So um, we have a very symmetrical approach to this. It kind of sort of makes me feel like um, the Washington Monument in Washington, D.C. But there is a little, I think, left to um, work on in our, possibly it, it could happen in post-production or something like that. What I'm kind of hoping for here is we potentially have a very interesting sky. This major cloud shape and form here, and then we have some clouds up here, and then we have a little bit of blue. So I'm going to switch to blue now. We have a little bit of blue kind of coming through. And so depending on the exact angle of the sun and whatnot, if we had a polarizer and we were to twist that and we were to emphasize those blues, we're going to get a little more interesting of a sky. Now, you can do some work in Lightroom, but I think we're going to have a challenge here because the difference between the white clouds and the light blue sky is definitely something that is, I, th I think Lightroom would benefit from having a little more variance there. You know, black and white might actually work on this. I haven't, I saw someone just put something here similar to the doc photo. This is just off center. Yeah, it's just, it, it needs to be nudged over crop this part off here. And then it will be like perfectly centered. Again, that line is not perfect in and of itself, but you, I, I'd certainly know what you're saying there, Darren. If we were to actually convert this to black and white and we were to enhance the contrast slider in Lightroom, we're going to get lots of good stuff coming through here, down in here, and up in, well, maybe not so much in the clouds. You need to work with your whites and your highlights sliders to manipulate this, if you the, the sky, if you were to do it in black and white. But doing that is going to make a lot of real good visual interest coming into these trees down here. Uh, and because right now everything feels somewhat kind of sort of almost monochromatic. And I'm thinking, let's just go ahead and make it completely monochromatic because why not? We don't have hardly any warm colors in here. Okay, we have whatever's here on this flag is almost coming in as a warm color, but it's so small, it's insignificant, it doesn't matter, visually speaking. We also have, I just noticed this, this element here is out of focus. And so that's that's a very close element, it's very near the, 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 the photographer and a little bit happening here as well. By converting it to black and white, this becomes less important. The fact that it's out of focus will probably become less important, I should say. So let's let's recommend this. Let's let's think about doing this. Let's do a whoops, let me clear this out first. Make it more symmetrical, kind of like that. Get rid of these elements that are out of focus. Also, dropping in the overall frame, the horizon will create a little more interest in the obelisk. If we were to convert to black and white and enhance the contrast I, and work with the texture, I think we could have something that's really um, elevating itself in the level of interest that the average eye is going to look at that and be like, hmm, I want to look at that a little longer. I want to study this object. And I think that's going to be the point of what we're trying to do with our pictures is how can we how can we make it so we can cause the person to stop and look a little bit longer than just going click 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 and they're just going through uh maybe youtube but the focus looks soft jerry is saying yeah unfortunately i think what i'm broadcasting at is 720p so the the fact that um this looks a little soft to you is probably because of that what i'm seeing here it seems mostly it looks pretty good in focus to me except these areas down here are definitely as, as i've said are look out of focus uh red filter in black and white yeah absolutely mike i agree i wish i had infrared camera with me for this shot oh so this must be yours um infrared would be amazing on this one yeah absolutely um i could really see that coming to life uh 
on this subject with this lighting. Infrared in a little more dull lighting, a little more overcast lighting can really, yeah, that I, I like that idea. All right, let us move on to the next one. Angela Hughes, Dog Slaughter Falls, Williamsburg, Kentucky, Pentax KP, Sigma 18250. And then you can see over here on the side, um, Jason Coffee also had shot one there. I'm looking at this and I'm like, mm, I obviously need to go visit Williamsburg, Kentucky at some point in time because that's just really amazing. Now, here's the thing on this image. Everything, let me switch back to my line here this element and again you guys are viewing it in 720p so you're probably not seeing the full 1080 that i'm viewing it as as i'm viewing it on my screen but anyway that element every element everything here all these items exhibits a little bit of what i'm interpreting as i the way i see it is camera shake and what's odd is you know of course the water looks beautiful because it's doing its thing and so the water is flowing, <clears throat> excuse me, flowing the way it's going to flow. It's doing its thing. Down here, I get a little bit of weird anomalies in the water too, I think that's exhibiting camera shake. But overall, so what it feels like is it feels, it just feels like this is a handheld shot, which is unfortunate because we went with a long exposure uh, to get the water the way we want it. But then there's a lot of shakies going on. Now I am less familiar with the Pentax KP. If it has in-body image stabilization, then maybe that got left on or something like that. And it just needs to be turned off because that possibly, I know in, in the Canon system anyway, with the lenses on the older lenses, if you left your image stabilization on, it, on a tripod, it would cause some jiggies to happen. We don't want that on these types of images. Overall, compositionally, I, I say it's a, a fairly decent image. Um, this portion up here in the upper right-hand corner, I find a little bit distracting. Both the, the, the branches that are reaching out and the big uh, overhang type item. So I'm just wondering if there's any chance that we can, we can somehow eliminate that, whether we, we just eliminate it via cropping or we step to the side uh, to the left and get that out of there. If we step to the side though, then this element becomes more of just a side show and it would become more annoying. The fact that it's actually coming in front of the falls, I don't have a problem with. It's just, if we were to step to the left, that's what I'm saying, this, this log visually moves to the right. And I think that would be a bad thing because then it's just kind of hanging there for no visual purpose at all. All right, you uh, Trail XP, appreciate the feedback. Um, that shot effectively had no post-production work done since I had been away from my computer. Yeah, you know, and if you want to, I invite anyone who's uh, submitted these items, if, if there's any chance that you're interested in fiddling with whatever after these comments or anything along those lines and resubmit them to the Facebook group, by all means, I would invite you to do that. That would be amazing. Um, Mark Peterson, uh, was it windy and are those spots blowing in the wind? So Mark, are you asking about like these, uh, these elements that I'm saying are camera shake? Is that what you're asking? If so, um, I might suggest, no, that's not the case. Now it's, I guess it's possible that the tripod could have been blowing in the wind, but this is a really substantial piece. This log here is really substantial. So I can't imagine that's going to flutter in the wind. These elements up here, certainly those could uh, flutter in the wind. Yes. Um, I just wish I tried to find a way to get uh, zoom to broadcast in 1080, but you know, maybe that's why I haven't crashed yet either because uh, uh, I just don't like it when my computer crashes when I broadcast live, but um, that hasn't happened in forever now. So that's, that's good stuff. Um, and it's possible that Zoom keeps that from happening by limiting it to 720. But anyway, uh, yes, on my iPhone, wasn't exactly sure. Uh, Mark Peterson is saying, yeah. So um, yeah, I don't think, I don't think it was wind. Um, another thing I'm curious about is, could this be a, a horizontal? I, you know, with Jason's over here on the side, his is vertical, uh, Angela's is vertical. I just don't, again, I've never been there. I don't know what it's like, but if, if there's more something on the side here, I'm just wondering what else is there, you know, maybe a slightly bigger crop that could be interesting. I don't know. Um, and, and so I'm just, it's just something to say, Hey, I'm curious, um, what it would be like. Overall, other than this other item up here in the upper right-hand corner, compositionally, 
uh, I think things are okay. Um, but we really just got to work on that. What I'm looking at is camera shake here. All right, here we go. Mark Peterson. Hey, you um, chimed in just in time. Here's your image on a recent trip to the black Hills. I captured this beautiful landscape at Badlands national park. Awesome. Uh, again, I'm going to be there in October and I'm looking to spend, if I can remember correctly, Monday through Friday, I think it is shooting or Monday through Thursday shooting, leaving Friday morning, possibly. So I've got plenty of time. I, I have to look at my calendar uh, of what I planned. I've got plenty of time to shoot, to, to hike and, and do whatever there in Badlands. And I'm looking forward to spending that, that many days just on that one park. It's going to be awesome. All right. Uh, Pentax P3, 50 millimeter Ilford Delta 400. Nice. We have a film shooter here. And I thought so because when I first saw this image, I was gathering these images. Um, I, I looked at the grain structure here. And before I read your description, I was like, that's either film or we added some grain in post-production, but we have some film, so that's good. Um, this was the film, incidentally, that um, when I first started teaching, we were still shoot, um, teaching film at the university. And this is the film that I had the students roll by hand in the little canisters. And yeah, it, that's a fun film to shoot. I uh, have been shooting film for three to four months now, and it has been a great way to remove the noise of extra settings and allow for me to focus on, yes, focus on composition, because you've got like 36 frames, right? And you're just slowing yourself down a little bit more. You're thinking a little more intently about the image. And one thing that's interesting, you know, when I was just out there shooting a little bit, a little waterfall yesterday, um, I don't even think you can call it a waterfall. I was in the stream. The water was tumbling over some twigs and logs and such. So it's not really a waterfall. But anyway, I worked on that image probably, I want to say at least 10, 15 different frames. And if you did that in film, it's just a different experience. Because if you did that in film, you would feel like you're just spending money, maybe even wasting money. And it's just like, but in the, in the digital sense, you know, you, you, you almost have a plethora of too many images kind of a thing. And here in the film, certainly it does cause you to focus on your composition and really pay attention to just every little step. It becomes minute baby steps, doesn't it? And, and that's a good exercise. I, I think it's a great exercise. Um, Bruce, yeah, you're chiming in saying nice image would probably crop the lower part, uh, do a 16 by nine ish type crop. Yeah. So if, I'll, I'll kind of preview that. Um, what's going on? Where's my thing? Here we go. So if we were to, you know, keep the clouds where they're at, that's decent. Uh, roughly like this is roughly 16, nine, maybe a little less somewhere in that department is roughly 16, nine. Uh, I can see it going that direction. The thing, um, the, the only thing that I'm curious about on this composition is, and for some reason, when it's the bigger set like this, I didn't notice it. And uh, when I went to 16.9, I did notice it. And that is this little interchange here. This bright piece right there comes in right to the edge. And for some reason, that's just a little bit of an interchange that uh, visual interchange that is just like... That just feels a little too close to the edge. This this little thing, let me switch to my line, this little shadow line right there. Um, I'm getting super picky, but I didn't notice it at this full item. But when I did do this other crop and I started paying attention, I was like, hmm, yeah, that, that feels a little too close for comfort. How you solve that is just a little bit of a custom vignette. You slightly darken this overall area and it becomes this area here and then it becomes more like this area just closer to it not that it's exactly close that exactly yet but you reduce the contrast effectively in that area and then the eye doesn't hover in that area and that's the important thing but we've got a great 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 line here it does come a little too close to that edge there and then it goes off into you know no man's land whatever the case is great textural things going on here with this otherwise great here just some minor items great uh texture coming throughout in the pathway in the grasses in the clouds lots of good layering lots of great things that are really coming together strongly i think in this image for mark peterson all right next image 
Uh, Nathan Goldberg, uh, in my view, I find the greens are a little bit on the electric side of things, a little bit rich, a little bit saturated. Um, Ron, I just saw you made a comment. I like the way the trail leads this, leads the viewer. Absolutely. Makes you want to walk up. Okay. I'm going to go back to that image really quick and I have to do that and that there we go. And that's the, that, and that's the great thing. I'm going to just kind of, there we go. I'm going to kind of take what you said there, Ron, and just kind of emphasize that idea. Yes. Where that trail is going. That's a beautiful thing to have happen with your viewer is to say, invite them in. And that's what layering does. And that's what lines do. And so layering, not all the time, does it do that, but it, it, layering can help you. Okay. You, you, you look at this part of the image, then you look at that part of the image, then you look at that part of the image and you're just kind of extending your depth into the image. Whereas a line like this, it takes you through those layers. So you have this layer, this layer, that layer, and the cloud layer, and this line, I will change it now to red. This pathway just takes you through all of those layers naturally, and it, it definitely invites you in, and that's a good thing. All right. Let us now go back up to this image uh, with Nathan Goldberg. I do appreciate the framing of the trees. There's, I think, some good things that are happening with that. But I'm wondering too. Let's let's read this really quick. Came across this beaver dam along the appropriately named Beaver Pond Trail in Algonquin Provincial Park a few weeks ago. It was nice to get away after seven months of some variation of lockdown. Absolutely, so glad you were able to get away. Get out there, take a look at a little bit of nature and submit an image. Thank you so much. That's just awesome. Uh, granted, it wasn't the best time of day as far as daylight goes, but I was really caught not by just let's see, caught by not just the shadow slash highlight contrast, but also the colors, the greens against the sky and the lake and the kiss of light in the background of the trees. Yeah, and I was going to mention that actually this this kiss of light in the background on the trees um, is really uh I think that's where the actually the, the primary interest of this image is. We do have a little bit of highlights coming down here on the beaver dam, but the fact that the rest of this is in shadow, I think all this greenery down here, we probably should just get rid of it, or at least most of it, and let the viewer, let me clear this off again, let the viewer you know, have this area as a foreground area just to understand the the setting of the place, the the idea of what's there but then we get launched into this type of stuff up here and it's all perfectly held into place up here now we do have some beautiful clouds and the light coming in too i wonder i'm going to get back to this if we were to do kind of a square-ish crop no nah, i really don't like that i think we still need to include that that trunk on the right hand side so roughly an eight by ten crop uh is what this comes out to be um you know i think there's still a, a question on this image of how do we get from one point to the other from one place to the other visually speaking and i think that's a challenge that we still have even with this crop because yeah while we have let me get back to my line one of these days i'll get really smooth with this and be able to switch back and forth without having to talk about it while we have this element of interest here there's nothing really well okay maybe this little twig here but there's nothing substantial that's actually taking us from here to here and so we have a very distinctly different sections of the image and so that's something that while it's a while it's a fine image otherwise i think if we could find a way to enhance the viewer's experience and say okay come from here and here or come from here down to here then we're going to elevate that experience for the viewer. And that, that would be something I would have to be there in the flesh to see the scene exactly for what it is. How close can we get to that beaver dam before I could offer any other advice on that? And Mark Peterson, you had mentioned, um, yeah, the trail leading the line caught your attention when I walked up the scene. Yeah, that and that that whole that whole trail that definitely that that was that was the key part of that image for sure. All right, uh, Ron, you're suggesting you'd like to crop all the way to the right shows the jog of water. So, are you suggesting cropping 
these items out kind of like this, Ron, or so let's say this is number one, or would you go with the blue cropping? What I'm going to do with the blue cropping and go roughly that direction with it. So if you're wanting to chime in further, Ron, I'd love to know, would you go with the red or the blue? Um, that'd be interesting to know what you're saying there. Because if you do that, yeah, you you might then, since you're eliminating a land mass, you might make it a little easier. That water then becomes that pathway to from, from one section to the other. Whereas with both land masses, we don't really have that clear pathway. Uh, Ron is saying the red. Perfect. All right. Thank you uh, for that, Ron. That's good stuff. Um, and I think I can even take that and I should be able to delete it. There it is. And all right. And now I will, I will clear them all. All right. Um, good. Thank you. I, you know, the, this conversation, that, that's what these things are really all about is how we can best learn and best have a, have an opportunity to understand is it's one thing for me to come in and just say, Hey, you know, this is the way it should be. And I might have a perfectly good reason for it. But when we have a conversation for something that's a little bit challenging, um, like this image, you know, I, I, I established the idea, how can we get the viewer? Let me make sure I'm on the right thing. Here we go. How can we get the viewer from this area up to this area or vice versa? And, and, and Ron, thank you. I think you had a, a pretty good idea there because what you're suggesting with that crop let me do that again. So roughly, and it's going to be blue this time and not red, but anywho, roughly like this, we still have interesting foreground type elements, but we don't have this land mass anymore over here on the left-hand side. And then that waterway becomes kind of that pathway, sort of. It's still not super strong, but sort of. Um, sort, of, an, of an, sort of an improvement. Now, another thing I just, I just noticed. Um, let me get to my line and let me shift to red. I do not like how this cropped. I would want to take care of those trees right there if we were to crop that off. Um, that just comes in on the edge and it just doesn't serve a purpose at all. So we would want to work that over and be thinking about these different elements that come into the border and then become a major distraction. We don't want to do that. Okay, Darren Whiteley, you have been patient. You've been waiting. Here is your image captured last weekend well you posted this july 2 so this was a little bit ago at also flaco park on the central coast of california these cormorants were staying still long enough to enable me to add a neutral density filter to smooth out the water nice yes it's like thank you cormorants especially that one on the left where he's looks like he's preening himself or something like that after a couple of captures this one of five seconds had hardly any movement in the birds full screen you can see the tail of the one on the right has some motion blur and contrast and muted colors in the water caused by low cloud good and the colors of the post of the cormorants so good good um all right this yeah with this image darren the subtle hue, the subtle blue hue in the water, I think really is what sets the, the overall mood and tone of this image. This image would also work really well in black and white if you wanted to experiment with that. But the color also still works well. And the fact that you have a cormorant on each pillar is fine. But if, 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 let me make sure I switch my tool here. If this guy wasn't doing the preening stuff and he looked more like these guys, I don't think there'd be anywhere near the interest of this image. The fact that he's doing his thing really helps you out. So, you know, I don't know how you would thank a bird for doing that, but, but that is, that's about the photographer and, and capturing the moment that you need to capture, right? You, you took several images, you got it to work. You were patient enough. You got it to work. You persevered good, good stuff. <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> and you're saying the one of the left arrived a couple of shots in perfect timing absolutely that's good even if one of these poles didn't have a cormorant you would still want one of them to have this type of activity like he's doing there and so that's just that's just beautiful so, so we are centrally low we are centrally configured you know everything is symmetrical 
we do have four posts instead of a, the standard that we kind of sort of want to usually think about going forward which is an odd number three or five really i'm not that bugged by it they are all mostly the same height of the post so there's a lot of things that are just talking about sameness that they're talking about unity sort of a thing so we get this this idea of repetition because of the poles um, and how spaced they are apart from each other of course this one is leaning the others are pretty much straight but we have a certain repetition we have a certain just focusing in everything in there i don't know that there's anything that i would do to change this image because even down here in the foreground i like how these pseudo reflections get really blurry and you know I want to say foggy. <laughs> it's probably the wrong word, but they just get really diminished. <clears throat> and so your five seconds exposure does all that. So yeah, kudos on this. I'm not finding anything else that I would want to go um, on this image. If anyone else wants to chime in before I leave this image, you know, by all means. Um, and so Darren, you're saying, yep, always wondered how this would work with an odd number. Well, you know, Photoshop does have that beautiful content to wear fill. <laughs> Not that I'm suggesting you do that and you submit it um, back in. By no means am I submit, uh, suggesting you do that because that would be a super, you know, editing of the image kind of a thing. The purists would go crazy on you. Um, but, but in this image, it would actually be easy to do. Um, but yeah, I, and I jest, I joke, I don't want you to, I honestly do not want you to actually do that. I don't think that I'm suggesting that will improve the image. That, that is not my point. <clears throat> All right, Chris Dolman with some in-camera movement, uh, personal landing on Olympia. I wanted to translate the motion of the sound into the image while capturing the lines of the sails and the contrast of the motion with the lines that create the interest in the photograph for me. Perfect. This is an interesting image because, well, first off, look at this. Um, I'm gonna use my circle tool. Um, in, an image like this really starts to show some technical sins, I guess is the best way to put it. Unfortunately, we've got a lot of sensor dust. And really, I probably shouldn't be mentioning this, but um, yeah, cleaning that sensor is going to be super duper helpful. Um, let's clear that out. Now, here's the thing on this um, image to be, to be kind of sort of thinking about, and that is the presence, the the effect of what's happening with these lines the, I'm, and I'm trying to do the black lines here and I'm, with my mouse. Yeah, I'm doing really, really bad. Um, the, these are very, very strong lines. They're almost equidistant. So that's, you know, it sets a certain rhythm, uh, which can help, but they also go, especially that central one, they also go top to bottom. And so they're really separating your image into three distinct, four distinct sort of areas. And, I just want to have us think about that as we're composing an image. I don't, I'm not suggesting it's bad. It's just something that I really want us to think about. Is that beneficial to the image? The one that I find the, 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 the starkest is actually this one here, the one in the middle, because it is the one that's most solid from bottom to top. This one peters out up here. This one peters out down here. So it's really not, you know, th those aren't super violating. They're not super cutting your image in half so to speak if the cutting of the image in half helps the composition then i say go for it and that's where it's like mm, you know it's a little bit it's a little bit strong for me this element here is a little bit strong does that mean you need more camera movement less camera movement i don't know what that answer is i don't know how tall that element is i don't know where it is in the frame according to where you're standing if it's possible to to change its presence but that's the first thing that just like I just wish I could, you know, see alternates and, and change things um, just to have options. Now, the thing that's super working here is that that bluish color coming through is really strong uh, with that bluish color. We have nuances of teal and blue and cyan and, and other things like that. Yeah, I, I, I find that to be really, really nice for sure. Um, 
I noticed a few of you, uh, the last cormorant hadn't flown in. Oh, if that last cormorant hadn't flown in, Trail XP is saying you could have cloned out the unoccupied pole to make it an odd number. Yeah, that's true. Um, but again, that's that's just something that I probably shouldn't have said anything. But sometimes it's fun to to dream what it would be like if we were to take it into Photoshop. All right, back on this image with Chris and the in-camera movement. Now, the thing I do love about the in-camera movement like this is the abstraction that happens, the abstractness, or whatever you want to call it, that happens. Uh, I'm also curious, we must have light sources because these elements here, or something's going on, these elements here have very strong start and stop points. This one's a little softer. The one I'm drawing here now is a little softer. But that first one, it's a very strong starting point and very strong ending point. And that happens a few other places here. And so that's just an interesting thing too, to be thinking about as your composition is coming together, Do the, everything else is really soft. And so do these elements, what can you do to, to mitigate that? Maybe it's just moving the camera faster. Maybe you know something else is going on there. So one thing also that I want to make sure that that we're thinking about, because that it may help alleviate some of these types of things here, where it just suddenly stops. And that is to, to, move, to move your camera, then hit the button and keep moving. So get that camera movement going first before you actually hit your button. And I think that would help um, a lot for you. All right, we are coming towards the end. And um, <clears throat> why? Let's see how, let's see what happens here with um, Gerald Sargent, rainy day on Devil's Hall Trail, Guadalupe Mountains National Park in Texas. This place offers a distinct change in ecosystems from the surrounding Chihuahua Desert. The Devil's Hall Trail leaves. Uh, from the Pine Springs Trailhead and skirts along the Guadalupe Mountain before dropping back down to the Pine Spring Canyon. My hike started out in the early morning and a light rain started about 20 minutes into the hike. Oh, that's just awesome. And these colors are rich and beautiful and gorgeous. That's great. As I'm kind of looking over this overall, you know, there's not really much that I would say we need to really work on. Um, the I do think there's a little bit, it gets a little bit close up here at the top. So we have both these twigs going to the top of the screen and then that mountain range in the back. I find that gets a little bit close to the, to the edge. And this is, if that's, if you literally did not crop this in Lightroom or whatever you edit your image in, this is where I would actually recommend a Photoshop edit and add a little bit of that sky back in just to give those subjects a little bit of breathing room so they aren't getting so close and visually close to the to the top edge. As I'm looking at the borders all around, looking at the colors, looking at the textures and things like that. Otherwise, I'm actually quite interested and in, in, in overall pleased with this image. And I don't really find anything that I would want to say work on this, work on that. Now the, in this area, let's see here. I better change from red because I'm going to paint on a red area. When we get this saturated, I don't know what camera you're using, but sometimes cannons can really go saturated in the red. Uh, when we get this saturated, it can be a little difficult for those details to really come out cleanly. And so it might be beneficial to use an adjustment brush just in this area, because these other areas, I'm going to go ahead and use a different color here, maybe the blue. These other areas, the reds are not that bad, or if they're super duper saturated, they're just tiny little amounts of areas that are super saturated. But in this green area, we've got a super duper saturated effect going on and so the, i think the detail does get lost a little bit and so using an adjustment brush to reduce that saturation just a little bit might help and bring back some of that detail uh, in those areas uh, ron is suggesting the branches were not as high would you crop off the top of the mountain no i don't think i would crop off the top of the mountain if those branches weren't an issue at least in this framing because the mountain gives a great, beautiful sense of the environment. 
and and what this Guadalupe Mountains National Park is all about. Because in one case, the word mountains is in the name of the national park, but in another sense too. Thank you, Ron, for asking the questions. Um, we're super glad you asked that. These elements here, these 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 clouds coming up and revealing that mountain more and more and more. With this atmosphere that we have in this image, it's good to let the eye know exactly what it is, let the brain, if you want to call it that, know exactly what it is we're dealing with, what we're talking about here, when we have this transition that I just drew in. If we were to have that transition, and then we were to have a crop, say, coming in here, roughly, well, over here on the right-hand side, that wouldn't make a lick of difference because there is no difference there. It's not an issue. But over here on the on the left-hand side, we would still have, let me change my color. We would still have this transition here. And then we have this little ootsy bitsy here, whatever that's going on. And again, you could have cropped it a little higher or whatever the case, it doesn't matter. You still have that little corner then of, of the mountain and sky transition. We're just like, mm, what's that? I don't know. But because we have the full mountain crest in the background, that just it, it just finalizes the scene and allows the viewer to say, "Ha!" Ah, and we're at peace, and we don't have to. That's not something that we, we're we're asking the viewer to solve the mystery. That's one thing that we don't want to do is say, "Hey, viewer, you need to fix this mystery in your mind." Sometimes we want to do that. We definitely do want to do that. In this case, I don't think. We want to do that. I don't think that would be a benefit for us. Uh, Jerry uh, would have loved to open up the top, but my back was literally up against the wall. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, Jerry, if uh, I, I do have a, a video here on YouTube, um, I'm trying to remember the, the name of it. It's where I look at a, a thing called the tree. It's in the Palouse area. Uh, posted a couple of years ago, but I added a little bit of sky um in photoshop and it looks completely natural but that that's the kind of thing where um i joked on the previous image about the cormorant and the posts making it only three posts or you could add another one make it five posts but um no on this one i i i, I would say look into that and see what you think um be, because i think just a little extra space there i'm talking like this space here if you were to just double that, maybe triple that at the very, 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 very most, that little space there, there's, there's just this difference in where the eye is looking at it. And it's not going to then, I, th I think what I find happening is it says, oh, that's so close. And that becomes a point of interest because that thing is so close to the edge. It becomes a point of interest when we didn't intend it to be a point of interest. And that's what I'm getting at. All right. Good stuff here. 10 seconds later, the rain came and the mountains were gone. Oh my goodness. Perfect timing then. Yes. I'm so glad that you were able to get this, um, able to get this shot before the rain obscured your vision. All right. Ryan Cameron shot this in Banff National Park. I love Banff, although I've only been there in the wintertime. Deep, deep cold. Holy cow. Was it cold? It was like in Fahrenheit, negative... I want to say 19, or was it even colder? Uh, the coldest day I was there in February, a couple of years ago. Anyway, um, found this dead tree trunk next to a river and thought it made for an interesting way to frame the mountain in the background. Absolutely. These types of things are definitely, they, they have a lot of potential interest for us, a lot of potential intrigue that we can utilize something like this as a foreground element to frame something that wouldn't otherwise make, possibly wouldn't otherwise make a very good image. The challenge we have on, the, have on this image is that foreground element is out of focus. And so we're really close to it. And if you were to do a focus stack and work in Photoshop to bring those together, I think you could do that very well. If you were to step back a little bit and allow your depth of field on your, if you had a wide angle lens and allow your depth of field to work it, then you're going to be able to have those item everything in focus in one frame. And one thing that really starts to emphasize the difference in what's in focus and what's not is down in these areas, it seems like, again, I don't have the raw file. I don't know what's going on here, but this area, especially with the rock, um, I'm a, a little bit of the water, this, this rock area too, definitely this rock area too. 
it seems like we have a really um, high setting on the, for some reason I'm having a brain fade now. <laughs> Clarity. Oh, my brain was not clear, but clarity was what I was looking for. And maybe even um, texture, but I, this looks more to me like clarity is coming through. Um, or we, we use the uh, sharpening item and, and went a little rich in the sharpening area under detail, I believe it is in Lightroom. So because these are so sharp and these have so much texture in them, those rocks, the water, they have so much texture in them. They're highly contrasted to the very soft, well, that's the wrong color, the very soft items here uh, of these logs. And they're just really soft. Um, overall with the composition, you know, I think it could be, I think I could see this as being an interesting composition because, you know, maybe a little more space between here and here and possibly a little more space between these two elements here. But otherwise, uh, I don't find the composition to be too bad. It's just we got to work on that focus. And I think that would make a huge difference. All right. Brett Baker took this on the edge of a waterfall in Wasatch National Forest. It was hard to balance and capture the photo at the same time. Yeah. Um, balance and capture the photo. I, I've, I've definitely been there because you're all like, teetering and then sometimes your tripod is like just about ready to fall over or something like that and you know that can be nerve-wracking as well but we have these wonderfully soft little petals and the flowers coming out of you know basically zero dirt is what it looks like and so we have contrasts of living and dead i.e the rock is the rock it's dead and whatever but we have this life springing out of it it's beautiful it's gorgeous um, the soft textures of the petals, although they're very tiny petals, uh, but they still come across to me as a little bit soft because I, you know, the petals, I know the soft. And then even though the, the rock is out of focus, especially here, I'm going to see if I can grab my rectangle, change my color a little bit, especially in this interchange here between the petals and the rocks, you know, that rock is out of focus. So we have this extremely shallow depth of the field but I still get the sense of that texture. I still get the sense of that ruggedness of the rock. And then down here, we actually have a, uh, the rock is fairly well in focus. So that's probably what I would work on on this image. These areas where it gets progressively more and more in focus, I would actually work to diminish that so that the eye doesn't gravitate down this direction. And then as far as your overall composition is concerned, I kind of find this one a little close to the edge. We have a lot of space over here and all the interest is over here though. And this one's reaching out this way. I just wonder if we were to, now let me reset this. If it would be possible, you know, to just shift the camera over a little bit, because if you were to do this like this, what I'm suggesting here, change my color a little bit, go to the line. You then have this beautiful line here. Oh, that's just coming in from one corner almost down to the next, but you know, it gets dark and whatever else. It either launches you up or it takes you down. Either way, this line is a little more emphasized when we place it in the corner like that. And since it's out of focus, it's not going to be a distraction. It's just that supporting element, right? So I would recommend just a little bit off to the side, but you know, your exposure is great. Your contrasts are great. Um, things things are, are, are working really well. Even this one reaching up, you, we have a great amount of headroom up there. Let me see if I, there we go. I can draw that. We have a great amount of headroom up here and I don't find that to be overly crowded. So kudos uh, all around uh, for the most part on this image, I would say. All right, so clear that out and we are done. So I just wanted to, bring attention, head on over to the website, uh, bring it uh, for a full description about the, about the workshop happening in September 19 through 24, going to Minnesota. And we're going to be looking at, there's just tons of waterfalls. There's going to be some great fall color. And then it's the North shore. So we also have the North shore of Lake Superior coming in. So lots of overviews, lots of variety 
we're, we're just not going to get bored or anything that we're shooting. If we're like Brent, we've gone to too many waterfalls. All right, we're going to go and look at more fall color or the vice versa, or we'll mix them together. We'll take a look at the, the lake. It's going to be a fantastic, a fantastic um, experience. And I invite you to show up and um, to, to, to look at this and to uh, be out there. I'd love to see you there and partake in this workshop. It will happen from Sunday. The September 19 is Sundays. And um, if you haven't listened to the podcast episode yet, a few episodes ago, I talked with a photographer in the area, Lisa Crayford. She gave me a lot of great tips and information about what we can do there in this area. And it's going to be a, just a fantastic time. So take a look. Uh, I put a link. I believe I put a link here. I'll make sure I put a link here in the description once this video is once we're done here with the live session and I, I might even be able to put it here in the uh, chat uh, if you would like the link for that because it's um there we go it's just going to be a fantastic time uh shooting all these wonderful scenes and wonderful items uh regarding just you know waterfalls that that's one of my favorite topics to shoot uh but fall color you know i'm from the pacific northwest we have some fall color really looking forward to see some quote real fall color uh where we have potentially forests full of just fall color like mad and and so i'm very much looking forward to that and then also i'm about to release about to um make it known make it out there Latitude Photography School. This is my new service that I'm doing. If you like what we're doing here with these reviews, I mean, we're going to be able to go so stinking deep. <laughs> I don't know if I should say it that way, but we're going to be able to take you on a journey about your creativity and your photography and get you going with some awesome assignments, some awesome lessons. My newest course, Designing Creativity and Photography, is all a part of that. And then also we just, uh, I have my fine art printing there. We just have so many things coming out. A key element though, is the members there, the, the, the people who are subscribed, they're going to also be able to direct at least some, if not a lot of what we talk about there, because I want to talk about what you're interested in, what challenges you have. And then I'm going to be able to custom make some lessons just for that, some tutorials, some lessons, whatever we need to do just for that. So thank you very much, everyone, for being here. Bruce, you very much, you're saying you very much enjoyed the commentary. Thank you, Bruce, for being here. Thank you, Jerry, Ron. We had so many great pictures. Um, I'm going to put in the, the link for the no that's not the link i wanted to do um i'll i'll put a link in the description for a preview for latitude photo school that uh you'll be able to take a look at but uh thank you all for being here i can't i mean mike and ron there's so many people i i, I just i know I, I, i'm missing someone um but just thank you so much it's uh fantastic to have y'all here and looking at these images with me. All right, I will end today. I will end tonight now and sign off now that I'm full screen and my screen is no longer shared, signing off. And again, thank you very much. Uh, take a listen, what I have coming up on Latitude Photography Podcast. I have a special guest coming up this week. So I'm interviewing her tomorrow. I'll release it on Sunday. We're all, we're talking about fine art and how it relates to photography. Looking so forward to that discussion. And finally, before I let you go, um, what was it? In the city, I had written down in the city. That is the next topic. You can either email me, brent at latitudephotographypodcast.com or just submit into the Facebook group if you'd rather do that and make sure you hashtag it in the city all like one word, you know, and I'll be able to get them in the next, in the next session, which is going to happen at the end of August, the last Thursday in August, we'll do it at the same time, 6.15 PM Pacific time. We'll see you then. Until then, happy shooting.